Nomads found her dying in northern Siberia. Walker. Kate Walker. Born in New York in the United States. She had an American passport on her. She showed up at the clinic last week. She's recovering. She's fine. You're certain, Olga Ethanova. You have to keep her there until we arrive. I will do what it takes. You can count on me, Colonel. Hello, Kate Walker. Who... who are you? My name is Kirk, Kate Walker. Kirk of the Yukol tribe. Do you remember the Yukols? Where are we? My memory's all mixed up. There was a terrible blizzard with snow and ice, and then nothing. We are in the clinic of Dr. Zamyatin, in the town of Valsambor. How did I end up here? We Yukos migrate with our snow ostriches to the sacred lands. It's a long journey, a very special journey. One month ago, we found you dying on a riverbank there in the north. We took you in and our shaman cared for you. Afterwards, we continued our journey, and today, we are both here to finish getting better. You lost a leg. It was an accident, you know. Some people don't like nomads like us. But don't worry about me. Dr. Zamyatin asked a master craftsman from Velsenbor to make me a new leg and he's going to put it on me when it's ready. It will be like a brand new leg. Why are you tied to that bed? That was the decision of Madame Olga, Dr. Zamutin's assistant. She says I'm too restless, and it's the only way to make sure I get better. Apparently, it's going to take a long time to make my artificial leg. And in the meantime, my people are without a guide and are waiting for me, with the herd, so we can continue. Why do the Yukols make the journey? My people live in symbiosis with the great snow ostriches, Kate Walker. Their wool protects us from the cold, their excrement feeds our crops, and their meat feeds us. They are also our mounts and beasts of burden. So we must follow them wherever they go. And do they migrate because of the weather? No, Kate Walker. They go to the sacred lands to reproduce. It is an event that only occurs a few times per century. For the Yukols, it is rare to be able to boast of having participated in more than three migrations during one's lifetime. The Yukols I've met didn't speak my language anywhere near as well as you. I'm very impressed. From time to time, missionaries and merchants came through our village. I learned very quickly, Kit Walker. It's important if I am to guide my people. Uh, I don't mean to be rude, Kirk, but aren't you a bit young for that? The spirits do not take age into account when they choose a chief for the Yukos. And the spirits are very wise. They do not make mistakes when they choose the one who will guide our people on the sacred migration. If you don't mind my asking about your leg, what exactly happened to you? Soldiers bombed the route we were taking with our caravan. For no reason. Just to frighten us and force us to turn back. I was a bit too close to the explosion. A piece of rock. That's it. You mean the authorities did it on purpose? But why? 
They think that the snow ostrich migration has no place in today's world, and that my tribe should settle down once and for all. But we will never do that, Kate Walker. That would mean defying the spirits. And the Yukos fear the spirits far more than the soldiers. Well, Kirk, I'm delighted to have made your acquaintance. I guess I have to go tell the staff that I'm awake, I feel fine, and I have no intention of hanging around here. Of course, Kate Walker. I'm sure someone will be in the yard. Maybe even Madame Olga. You should go for a walk in the yard, Kate Walker. That door leads right to it. Anybody there? I don't think anybody heard you, Kate Walker. Try using the call button that's located next to the door. Nothing. It doesn't work, Kirk. Hmm. I think I saw some of the staff using it the other day. Take a good look at the mechanism, Kate Walker. Maybe you can find a way to get it working again. Bolted tight. This diagram shows how to turn the call button on, but I can't do anything until I can get at the internal mechanism. Search the room. I'm sure you'll be able to find something you can use to open it up with. You can't repair this bell without opening it, Kate Walker. What's that owl doing here? What's that owl doing here? That should do the trick quite nicely. Now try to use it to see if you can repair the call button. This knife should make a perfect screwdriver or lever. This knife should make a perfect screwdriver or lever. Right. 
Let's see if I can repair the mechanism. If you're not sure, maybe the diagram you saw earlier might help. just have to find a supervisor. Well done, Kate Walker. I'm going to have a bit of a rest now. Please try to come back and say goodbye to me before you go. <laughs> Go hold your head under the ice water in the fountain, Nikita. That'll clear up your damn headaches. Not this time. This isn't a normal headache. It's like a pile of rusty nails rattling in my skull. Well, that's you settled then. Did you speak to Madame Olga or Dr. Mongoling? No. It's maybe there, though. Sticking the damn nails in my head while I'm asleep. Nail after nail through the nostrils. It's just like I told you. The only thing the doctors want is for us to get back. Have you seen the man we'll too? The in the aviary later. Don't tell the staff. That it way, maybe they'll believe me. It's and have you seen any dragons you too? Relax a bit. The monster of the lake can't get anywhere near you. We're way too high up, you know. And besides, the fountain pipes are far too narrow for its tentacles. Have you seen the mammoths, too? Go tell the staff, that way maybe they'll believe me. And have you seen any dragons, too? Relax a bit. The monster of the lake can't get anywhere near you. We're way too high up, you know. And besides, the fountain pipes are far too narrow for its tentacles. Dr. Mangling. Ah, you're finally awake, number 10. What can I do for you? Well, it seems to me that I'm cured. And now I'd like to be on my way. Given your condition, that would seem somewhat premature and perhaps even unreasonable, Number Ten. I am not a number. My name is Kate Walker. I would appreciate it if you would call me by my name, Doctor. There's a perfect example. That aggression boiling up within you. I'm afraid that it may be a significant traumatic after-effect. So you're refusing to let me leave? Oh, no, of course not, miss. I have no intention of abusing any of the prerogatives of my position. Nonetheless, first you must submit to a series of tests that are designed to demonstrate that you have fully recovered. You understand. Please, sit down. I... on that? Yes, yes. Don't be afraid. What the...
Don't worry about these restraints. Merely a simple formality that's part of the protocol that Dr. Olga, our supervisor, has implemented. Right, I do believe that we can begin. Now, be so kind as to state your first and last names, age, and place of birth, please. I'm beginning to lose patience. My name is Kate Walker, I was born in New York, and I'll be 30 this year. Good, good, miss. Up until now, my device would seem to corroborate what you say. You're using a lie detector? It's procedure. Please stop worrying and talk to me instead of your friends and family. Are you on good terms with them? I can't do anything because of his lie detector. I should tell him the truth. Answer me, please! No, I cut off with them. I haven't had any news from my mother for weeks. And Dan, my fiancé, left me for my best friend Olivia. You seem to be basking in this chaos and anarchy, Miss Walker. Is this inclination for disorder connected to this Hans Vorlberg and Oscar? You spoke about them at length while you were delirious. I'm beginning to lose patience. Oscar was an automaton and Hans Vorlberg was the person who made him. We became friends, and I went with them on a long journey through Europe. There you have it. To be honest, what I'm interested in, Miss Walker, is that during your travels you were in contact with the Yukol people, the nomads who brought you here to Velzenbor. In your opinion, what should we fear from such a primitive tribe of savages who understand neither law nor border? Refusing civilization and settlement. I'm beginning to lose patience. I think, Doctor, that the Yukols live in harmony with nature, time, and space. They have no real reason to change the way they live. Now that is an example of typical American idealism. Maybe you should go back to New York right away. I'm sure your brilliant ideas will be justly appreciated there. I'm not going back to New York, and too bad if he isn't happy. Answer me, please! Hmm, I see. In a way, your silence is quite answer enough, Miss Walker. So you intend to continue your journey through our country. A hazardous undertaking with neither goal nor destination. Pity for a brilliant New York attorney who seemed to have a gleaming future. That's not for you to decide, Doctor. For the rest, I think I've demonstrated throughout this interview that I present no psychological after-effects from my injuries. I would therefore like you to authorize my release now. Of course, of course. Do calm down, Miss Walker. I'm sorry, but I'm not used to being interrogated like this. Some years ago, I would have interrogated you in a very different manner, Miss Walker. I grant that I may still feel some nostalgia for the good old traditional methods. You're one of the very last representatives of a world that is fast disappearing, Miss Walker. A disordered world that no one will miss. This key is much like you, unstructured and uncontrollable. If you're able to find a way to use it to leave this floor, then you shall have proved that you are permanently cured. I would like to get my things back before I leave. You'll find them there. <laughs> 